All right, so in this video, I want to add a little bit of extra functionality to this function. So as of right now, this is what we've done. So we can basically pass some tables to our list by using this question marks. Basically, this question marks are the placeholders. And if we do a question mark, we're saying this question mark is the table in here, the first table, then the second question mark is the second table and so on. Now, what I want to try to do in this video, I want to try to add functionality so we can add some regular variables to our statement. And what I mean by that is that if we decide to add like a where close and say where l.qty is greater than 15 or something like that, I did 25 instead of 15, where correctly, let's go back and fix that. So we can filter with this where statement. Now I want to be able to pass this variables like 15 as another parameter here and see if we can make it work. Because usually when we use regular like query function in Google Sheets, and we try to do things like this in their select statement, we have to use concatenation and do all this stuff, which we could still do, but it would be nicer to not have to do that. So let's see if we can make it happen. So I'm gonna undo this actually to bring it back to what it was. What I want, I want to go back here and right now the way it works, we take all of these variables here and basically just assume they're always arrays and we just convert this to this array of objects and we add it to this list of arguments. Now what's going to happen though, if we, for example, do something like comma and click on a single cell where we would want to put our variable, that cell is gonna go to our function, not as an array, it's gonna go to our function as a single variable, number or text, whatever it may be. What we could do, we could say that, let's check if this is actually an array or a range. And if it is, let's actually do that transformation. And if it's not, let's just keep the variable as is. Let's try to do something like that and see what happens. So I'm gonna for now remove this for a second. Let's go back to our script. So I think for the first one, I'm going to assume it's always gonna be an array. I'm not sure if that is the way I should go, but I think the first one is always gonna be a table in our from statement. I don't particularly want to pass variables to the select statement, at least for now. Maybe later on if we decide we wanna pass variables to our select statement, we'll change that. So that means this one I'm not gonna touch, I'm gonna leave it as is. What I'm gonna do here, this is the rest of the arguments, I'm gonna go with this for each loop. So right now we're just pushing that with this transformation. Now I'm gonna just make this a multi-line thing, I'm probably gonna convert it back to single line in a second. But for now, let's just create this so we can push this to a separate line. And instead of just doing this, when we just push this to an array, we'll do an if statement here. So we'll do something like if, I'm gonna do a bracket here and close it in here. So in this if statement, we wanna check if this AR, which is that current argument from this list of arrays, if that is an array, then we want to actually do this. So the way we can do that, we can take our array global here, and basically it has this isArray method on it. And if you pass the array to it or your variable, whatever it may be, if it is an array, it should return true. So we can check if that's an array, and if it is an array, we will do this. Otherwise, which is gonna be our else statement, we don't want to do this array to object of array transformation in that case. We simply want to just push that variable without transforming it to anything else. So do something like this. Now all of this, we should be able to write on a single line. Instead of doing all of that, we could just 
make this simpler by doing something like this. I'm going to move this to this line, remove all this statements that I did. We're going to do this AR as an argument we're passing to this for each. And we're going to do an arrow function here. And in that arrow function, we'll do this, which we're checking if that's an array. And then we'll do a question mark. So that means if this is true, then do this. And then I'm going to do a colon. So this is like a short if statement. So we're saying if this is true, let's do what's after this question mark. And if it's not, let's do what's after this colon. I'm going to save this. Let's go back and check this out. So this still works. That's good news. Now let's try to add a where clause. So I'm going to go over here someplace and add a number like 20. And I'm going to try to use that as a variable in my statement. So I'm going to go back here and do where l.qty is greater than question mark. And that question mark is going to be now third question mark, which means we should be able to do comma and click. I cannot see what the cell was. So I'm going to click here and then correct this. So that should be G1. So I'm going to do greater than G1. And that should refer to that cell. So let's do one for a second. So that's right. So this is all greater than one. If we do greater than 10, 10 should disappear. Works. If we do greater than 22, it should only keep the 55. So this works using this variable. I'm curious if this is going to work if we pass it as a text variable. Let's do something that's greater than some of these, like 15. Good. So it works the same way, whether it's text or number. I think I like that actually, so I'm going to keep it as is. But now we are able to pass arguments in our function as well as a single cell if we wanted to. So what that means is that we could just go here, for example, and do like super SQL and do a select statement. We can do select star from question mark where QTY is greater than 11 and this and now this would be our data table and this should work but now if i don't want this 11 hard coded i just go and type 11 someplace in here doesn't matter where it is someplace in your spreadsheet and then go back and remove this 11 put a question mark in there and then do a comma and click on this 11 so now it should be linked to this 11 cell and this still works. And if I change this to like 15, it should update and switch it to 15. Seems to be fine. So this is just going to go by the order of question marks. Whatever question mark you have, you're going to either pass a table or a variable to it, which means we could also do more than one, right? So for example, if I did select star from question mark where quantity is greater than this and quantity is less than this other one. And we're going to have to define what that other one is, which I'm going to do here. So that gives us an error because there's no reference here. So let's do a reference. So let's do something like 25. So now this is between 15 and 25. And if I do something like 10, and 25, we should get two records. This seems to work just fine. We should probably try this with text as well, just to make sure this works. Let's change this one to Joe. So let's try to do a select statement and grab everything that's matching Joe. So I'm going to do Joe here and go and do Close this, hit enter. Nice. So that picks up Joe. If I change this to Smith, we should get Smith. If we get Anna, that gets us nothing because, well, apparently 
there are no results. Maybe we should have some sort of handling to say no results instead of having a reference error. Yeah, actually, let's go ahead and add functionality like that. If there are no results, let's actually return some sort of other message back. Gonna go back here. Let's see. So, so this is where we get our results back. So I'm curious what it returns if the results are empty. We have to test this separately to see what happens if the results are empty. So back to their docs, let's actually just copy this sample code and let's do a quick test here. So I'm gonna do console.log res. And then here we'll pass a statement that's gonna return nothing. So select star from question mark where A is greater than four, something like that. I'm gonna run this. Let's check the log. So apparently it returns an empty array. Okay, so basically we can check if the array length is zero, then we'll know there are no results. That's good, so I'm gonna go back here. Oops, not here, here. And here I'm gonna do an if statement. So I'm gonna say if res.length equals to zero, then we're gonna know that this is empty. Otherwise, we're gonna do what we used to do before, which is all of this. Okay, so here we have to figure out what we're gonna return in case of no results. So we could return just text, there are no results. I don't know if that's necessarily a good idea to return text back. What if we just return an error? Do we have to do a new? Probably, let's do that. And we'll say no results. Oh, so this is a return, not a throw. I think that should work. Let's try this and see what happens. Gonna go back to this. Still says reference does not exist. Oh, you know what? Rookie mistake. That should be equal to. Okay, I think that's correct now. Statement returns no results because, well, actually there are no results. But now if we change this to Smith, that works. If we change it to Joe, that works. And if we do Bob, we get an error and says statement returns no results. Okay, I think I can live with that. So for now, I'm gonna handle it this way. Let's just do a couple of comments here to make this cleaner. All right, I think that should do it for this one. So let's just change this back to Smith. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.